Hello everybody, this is uh, Retro Rocketman and today I've got a Nerf Zombie Strike Quad Rod and uh, we're going to be um, painting this this uh, gun to make it look more like a uh, I know, a real world used weapon as opposed to a toy with all these candy colours, uh, you got your, your your lime greens and your bright oranges, not something you'd really associate with a, uh, a zombie apocalypse if you like, but uh, uh, we're going to give it a go. So first up, what we need to do is sand off all of Nerf insignia and any of the uh, legalese that they, they adorn with these guns. Uh, there's lots of different uh, warning labels in different languages um, that really needs to be sanded off because it's not going to be something that you really want to be see, seen on the, on, the, uh, on, the, on the finished product. Um, I'm using a, a Dremel-like tool, uh, powered like a little sanding disc. These seems to be quite harsh on the plastic, so you want to be very, very light and careful with your touch. I'm not too concerned about um, the texture left behind because this will add to the effect of the gun. So now I'm just removing the uh, extra texture with with some sandpaper um, not totally because again it's the texture left behind is going to add to the overall effect so here we have the uh, sanding finished as you can see there's still texture there um, again that's going to look like bashed and battered metal and uh, um, make it look like a world used piece of hardware now it's on the line out in the open because I'm going to hit it with a spray gun a rattle can this is just an undercoat of white um, just to mute those candy colours, those oranges and greens that really make it look too much like a toy. And uh, it's not totally covered, you can still see remnants of the orange through there, but now I'm going to hit it with some black, just a, a flat black, because again this is just going to be an un another undercoat, just to conceal those candy colours. As you can see it's uh, Looks more like a gun now. Now I'm going to just smash it with some silver, some chrome, in a, in a lot of the areas that the, the gun um, will come through as a metal look. Um, just doing it crazily, I don't, I'm not too fussed about um, certain areas because they will get different, um, more attention with a brush. Out in the open, don't want to be breathing this stuff. and. Now we have the final stage finished where all the oranges and greens are gone and a lot of the metallic areas now look like metal. Quite happy with the way this chrome silvers came come out. It um, definitely makes the gun look more like a like a prop as opposed to a toy. And we're going to just get ready to apply different colours to create um, a lot more interest. And we're just going to be brushing that on. And I'll be using Tamiya uh, water-based acrylics. The first up. I'm applying a colour called Dark Copper 
in certain parts of the gun just to uh, break up all this silver and I'm not too fussed about masking off because this gun's going to look like it's been through the wars so it's going to be dirty and grungy and grimy uh, so I'm just sort of like applying it liberally with a brush even leaving some brush texture behind it's all going to add to the effect so I'm not being too fussy about a lot of clean lines you can if you want but for my end result I know where this is heading uh, I'm not too concerned about everything looking clean so now I'm applying a gunmetal colour to um, other areas of the gun just to create more interest more textures different layers of colour all, all looks quite dramatic Now is a colour called um, metallic grey, just to give it more depth. And now I'm applying um, little bits of plasticine to certain areas on the silver finishes um, because this will be, after I apply the colour, will be rubbed off to reveal the silver underneath. And it looks like mate will make it look like chipped and worn paint. Now for a bit of dramatic contrast, I've got, I'm going for a red, again Tamiya colour, very strong colour, so I'm, I'm applying it to um, very limited parts of the gun just to give it extra interest. As you can see now I'm going with the uh, Shoe polish, favourite for ageing and weathering, especially um, silver areas, really brings out those uh, worn, weathered, grimy, dirty, world used looks. And um, it's actually quite enjoyable, it's almost therapeutic. You apply it liberally. Let it get into all the nooks and crannies. It really weathers your paint job. And then you remove the excess with a rag before it dries too much. Otherwise, uh, well that can give you different effects too. Um, if you let it dry, um, depends what sort of intensity you want to your, uh, your finish. So you can see the details really pop once you put the, the shoe polish on especially in the silver areas. This just ages the gun dramatically. And this, can, this method can be applied to just about anything where you want a uh, more real world look to it. Let's face it, we don't look after things, uh, especially uh, out in the field where everything gets dirty expose the elements just gives you a level of realism it's amazing how much it just makes the silver look less like a painted piece of plastic and more like a real metal part of the gun now I'm using brown shoe polish just to give it an extra level of depth, especially on the on the copper areas. This looks like grime and rust build up. And it just really makes these these areas pop. Complements the black quite well actually. Just gives it so much more depth. 
and interest. And you can see here, applying it in the in those creases, it look, looks like dirt, grime, and rust. It's fantastic. Just gives it such a real look to it. A bit more dust, uh, rust um, effect to the screws and nuts. Really makes them stand out. And then to the nameplate, grime it up. Really make the uh, the lettering and the and the metal stand out as well. And the final product. Back in the box, it looks a lot better than what it did when, it, when I started, in my opinion. And uh, it looks like it could be could be screen used in a zombie movie, and it would be quite convincing, in my opinion. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. As you can see in the in the details there, all the chipped paint and the rust coming through and the grime and the dirt. Looks like it's really been through a zombie war. All the plastic parts look look like metal and you can see all the worn edges. Really looks like a soldier's weapon. As you can see, I didn't paint the interior of the barrels because I still wanted the uh, gun to fire the darts. And uh, by caking them up with paint, they may have um, compromised the uh, firing mechanism. Overall, I'm quite happy with the way this turned out. See the grime around the ins around the barrels. So there you go, guys. That's uh the Zombie Quadrot by Nerf, painted to look like a real world item. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and um, probably try and make more of these. So see you in the future. All right, guys. Bye.